Welcome to Libraries Today. This program is intended to recognize and highlight the unexpected ways local libraries serve their communities today. I'm your host, Stan Howe. For those of us who love a library, we enjoy browsing through the stacks, looking for a good book or video, or maybe sitting down to do a little work at one of the computers. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to prepare a library for the day's visits. Today, we're going to drop by the Martinsburg Berkeley County Public Library System and see how it all works. Let's take a peek behind the bookshelf and find out what makes the Martinsburg Berkeley County Public Library tick. It's a day in the life of a library in Berkeley County, West Virginia. Welcome to Martinsburg, the home of the Martinsburg Berkeley County Public Library. I'm here with library director Gretchen Fry. Gretchen, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Well, let's first let's talk about your transition because prior to being here, you were the library director at the Bolivar Harpers Ferry Public Library, small library in Harpers Ferry. Uh, you moved now into a large library system. Besides the main library here in Martinsburg, you have branches in North Berkeley. Musselman and Hedgesville. So obviously an important transition for you and uh, a, a, a big step forward. I would understand that there would probably be some complications, some challenges. So what have you found in your first uh, year or so uh, of doing this? Well, I guess um, the big thing is moving from a small library to a large library. First of all, it's great training to be at a small library because you really get to do a little of everything. Um, so you get experience in those different areas. Um, and then when you come to a large library system, you're, just, you're doing a lot of those things on a large scale. Um, the challenge, of course, is that at a small library, you can do um, pretty much everything and you, you have a good view of everything. But at a large system, you really have to delegate to other people, um, trust that other people will, work, um, will get the work done. Um, and I think another big challenge is uh, just with communication is making sure that everyone's on the same page with the same um, uh, mission as well. Mm -hmm. The number of employees would be a big change. Uh, I think you said you had three at, in, at in the Harpers Ferry. How many employees do you have now? Um, I have 13 uh, full-time employees and 25, 25 part-time employees. So tell me, describe for me a typical day here at the Martinsburg Public Library? Um, well, uh, for, for me, it's really, it really depends. I can be doing anything from, uh, there may be a problem with um, something with maintenance, so I may be uh, you know, talking to somebody on the phone about the heating system's not working or something like that. Um, I could be uh, meeting with staff to talk about issues. Um, or I could be uh, doing something like going and talking to the county commission um, about our, our current situation here, too, as well. You know, a lot of people have the idea that a library is, is just a building filled with books. Uh, obviously, it's very much more than that. It's a large part of any community. Yes. Uh, what, what kind of role does your library play in this community? Um, well, a, a number of things. We, of course, we bridge the digital divide. There's a, a large uh, number of people who uh, don't have internet access or um, for various reasons. Um, and we provide computers. We provide uh, free wireless service for people. Um, so that's a, a big thing. Uh, we, of course, provide a, a community meeting space. So we have um, meeting rooms for people to, uh, they can sign up and meet here. Um, we provide educational programs for children, particularly um, in the summer. Um, a lot of times, uh, pe that we, we're one of the few places that provide free uh, activities for kids. And of course, the purpose of summer reading is to keep kids reading throughout the summer so that their, um, that their uh, scores don't slip, their uh, reading scores don't sl slip, because a lot of times over summer, a lot of studies have shown that kids' reading scores will slip over the summer if they don't have um, if they don't continue to read over the summer. You have a program going on today with, uh, with kids. We do, we do. We have a um, preschool story time, which, um, and, uh, which is a, a monthly, uh, I'm sorry, a weekly event. Um, and actually all four of our libraries provide uh, story times for kids, um, as well as a number of, of other activities. Um, one of the other things that we do, uh, which we've started doing, is actually doing more uh, STEM programming, which is uh, science, technology, engineering, math programming. Um, 
we are uh, currently working on developing a, a STEM lab. It's actually under construction right now at our library. Um, and um, we're hoping to get that up and running. Um, and um, of course, the uh, North Berkeley, um, I'm sorry, Hedgesville actually also has uh, their level up programs they have on Mondays. Um, and we've started uh, monthly programs as well here that are STEM related. So as you, know, as you look at this uh, relatively new position for yourself, uh, what would you say is the biggest challenge that you have faced so far in, in this job? Um, I think probably our, when I came into the job, I came into a situation where they had already lost $500,000, um, I had a $500,000 cut. And I think the, the library was in the processing of ha process of having where, to downsize. And where did that cut come from? Um, that was from the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, that meant that um, we had to, the, the, the library was in the process of downsizing, um, but there, we're still not entirely there. We're still kind of feeling that pain of, not, of having $500,000 less each year than we used to have um, and, and sort of stretching in a lot of different areas to try to uh, fill the, the holes that we have now. So I think that's our biggest, one of our biggest challenges. Can you give us a tour? I sure can. So Gretchen, what area are we in right now? Well, we are on the third floor of the Martinsburg Berkeley County Public Libraries, and that includes the reference area, which we're in now, as well as the computer lab and our nonfiction collection. Okay, as part of the reference area, I noticed uh, th this piece. Uh, what is this? This is a book carousel um, from around 1890, um, and it was in an earlier version of the Martinsburg Library. We have some, some books behind us in these shelvings as well. What, uh, what are these? It, uh, this is our rare book collection. And then we have, I, I don't see this very often, in, in, a, in, in a library we have a, we have a piano. Yes, yes. This was donated to the library, um, and in the 70s they actually had concerts here, um, and they've actually used it for charity events as well here at the library. Let's go take a look at the uh, computer lab. So this is the computer lab. Correct. How many uh, computers do you have in here? We have 24 computers. How, and how is this used by the public? This is used by um, anyone who wants to come in who has a library card. Mm -hmm. um, they use it for everything from research papers, the schoolwork, applying for a job. So multiple reasons to use the computer lab. So we're on the ground floor now of the library, and this is the children's section. That is correct, yes. So what kind of uh, programs do you have down here? We have programs for um, preschool age as well as toddlers. Um, and um, we have also as well our summer reading program, of course, which is for all ages. Um, we have Lego Club, and um, we have um, a number of other activities every month as well. So Gretchen, we're now on the main floor. Where are we now? We are now in the main floor, which includes the circulation area and the teen zone. Um, and the teen zone um, is, offers many programs for teens, including our anime club, our art club, and our book club. Appreciate the tour of, of a great library here in Martinsburg. Let me leave you with one last question. If you had a wish list, mm -hmm. what would be the number one thing on your wish list? Well, obviously, one thing that we really need is more funding. So that would be the number one thing. Gretchen, I appreciate the time and, and the tour, and uh, thanks for uh, letting us take a, take a peek at uh, the Martinsburg Public Library. Thank you for coming. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to take a look at the three branch libraries in Berkeley County. Have a kit so you're ready for any emergency. Develop a plan for what you and your family will do before disaster strikes, and stay informed during severe weather any way you can. Welcome to Hedgesville, West Virginia, the home of the Hedgesville Public Library. With me now is branch manager, Dana Phelps. Dana, thanks for being with us. Glad you're here today. So we're in, we're standing in practically a brand new building, a very impressive looking new library here for Hedgesville. I guess opened about three years ago. Three tell years me, ago. tell me about the new building. We are really excited to be in the community of Hedgesville. Uh, we do library services um, 
For part of Morgan County and the Hedgesville area, uh, we are located in the northwest part of Berkeley County. So um, we're just thrilled to have the new building. The um, town of Hedgesville has really, um, really been supportive, and uh, our circulation has skyrocketed um, since leaving our, our previous facility. A lot more room in this building, I oh, suppose. Oh, yes, indeed. I, I guess one of the challenges, whenever you have to move from one building to another, there are some challenges involved in getting the books moved and all that. Explain to me how that works. Well, uh, my understanding, and I did not accomplish this task myself, but my understanding is they did cart the books uh, from the library, which is approximately maybe a football field away from this location, and brought them into this library. Uh, we only had one shelf casualty, I understand, and we <laughs> since repaired that shelf, and it's at, it's at North Berkeley Library. Um, so we we had fewer books than we have now. So we're right now at about 12,000 books in this facility. Dana, you not only manage uh, this library here in Hedgesville, but you also manage the library in Falling Waters, West mm -hmm. Virginia. So tell me about how, how that works. The, that's correct. Um, there is a smaller facility that we have in um, in Falling Waters, which is the North Berkeley Library. Uh, it's five miles um, located on the same road as, as we are here. Um, it's really it, it's a really interesting situation because uh, we kind of um, have the same community. We see the same people at each library. Uh, the previous manager of this library and I kind of, when we lost the, the funding from the school board a few years ago, we decided that there should be library services at the north end of the county. Uh, and so we alternated our schedule so that when this library is closed, North Berkeley Library is open. So from that standpoint, it's kind of easy to be the manager of both branches. But I have an amazing assistant manager at the North Berkeley branch. And she just kind of steps right in and takes over. Uh, she does all her own programming there. Uh, Sometimes she'll ask me to help her with this or that, but she she handles all the programming at North Berkeley Library. I handle all the programming here. Um, so we use each other a lot. We help each other a lot. And um, we both work at both libraries. So uh, it's kind of a, a nice situation. You mentioned the programming here in Hedgesville. What mm -hmm. you would describe what kind of programs you have here? Well, we average about 30 programs a week for children, or, or month, sorry, 30 programs a month for children and um, about two or three programs for adults a month. We get about 250 kids per month. Um, that's low end, probably about 300 to 400 high end, depending on what our programming is. On Mondays, we offer the same program at 1, 3, and 5. It's STEM-based, or I should say STEAM-based, because we do have art programs in there as well. Um, so, uh, for example, two Mondays ago, we did a program where the children um, learned about tanning, um, how Native Americans tanned leather. Uh, we then used um, mallets and uh, stamps, and we stamped our own leather and did our own leather work. Uh, the we, kids had a great time. We had 55 participants. Um, and, and that's the kind of fun things we like to bring to the community. And uh, we, at 1 o'clock, we have mostly homeschoolers. At 3 o'clock, we have uh, the kids walking down from the middle school, which is about a block away. And then at 5 o'clock, we have parents bringing their children back. And that way, we don't have to change programming. We're doing the same programming all day long. Uh, we do have a, a strong homeschool community uh, in Berkeley. And... Um, and they come out for our programming. Sounds like you're a big part of the community. Most of the people in Hedgesville can walk here to the library. So uh, we, we get on quite well um, with the folks in Hedgesville. And uh, we are their DVD center sometimes, <laughs> too. So um, our community, like most of the communities in West Virginia, uh, we don't have... Um, a lot of internet service past uh, this road in the county. So we do become the, the base where people can come in and use the internet. And because they don't have the computer, there's no streaming of television programs. Also, Comcast or, or whatever the, um, the provider, um, whether, it's, um, whether it's a satellite provider or Comcast, uh, 
they don't have service um, for cable out in this, this area, for television out in this area. So we become their entertainment for the evening as well. So we do have a large um, circulation of DVDs and a large percent of people come in um, looking to find a computer to use. So we're their office services, we're their entertainment, and they enjoy our programming um, immensely. So yeah, we're, we're a good fit in this community. Can you give us a tour? Oh, absolutely. So this is our children's department. We do uh, probably 90% of our children's programming here. Uh, we have a nice Lego section over here, which is very popular in our library. And uh, we also have a large television, and uh, we do video game programming twice a week. Okay. I did, I did notice I saw my favorite uh, superhero back there, Green Lantern. Oh, so yeah. Well, That was impressive for me. <laughs> so this is our circulation uh, desk. We mm -hmm. have um, two two circ desks and uh, I guess this is the business end of the library, mm -hmm. our office center and of course that's very important in libraries nowadays. Um, we have two uh, packs that uh, folks can <laughs> folks can look at our books on um, and this is our adult section. <laughs> Although I know the adult section does have some Legos up there as well. well. Indeed, uh, as high up as possible the kids are always wanting to play <laughs> with the Legos. <laughs> So Dana, tell me, what is your vision of the future for this library? Well, um, Berkeley County is a growing county. We uh, really need the space. So we, we need, right now, to do programming here, we have to move all of our shelves to the wall. We do adult programming on this side. We have um, yoga twice a week. So we need some, some programming space, some meeting room space, and uh, we do have the room available upstairs. This is a two-floor facility. The upstairs is uh, completely unfinished. So capital funding is, you know, not going to happen. So we do have um, some high hopes for the future. Great. Dana, thanks for the tour. And now let's uh, go pay a visit to your other branch library oh, yes. in North Berkeley County. Mm -hmm. Molly Brady is the assistant manager here at the North Berkeley Public Library. And uh, Molly, thanks for dropping by. Thank you for coming so, by. So let's talk about your library. What, uh, as you go through your day, what's a typical day like? Oh, we have lots of activities here. We have children and adults come in, computer users. People use our copier machine. Mm -hmm. So do you have more adults or more kids? Uh, mostly more adults. More adults. And I, I guess here... Uh, growing part of, well, all of the county's growing, and uh, uh, new high schools just down the road, uh, right? So it's, it's really uh, a really growing county. And how's that affect the library? We have given out probably over 100 new library cards in the past month. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow, that's great news. So what kind of programs do you offer? We do a once-a-week preschool story time. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting ready to do our annual fall festival with our catapult. Catapult? Catapult. You have a catapult. We have a catapult. Okay, tell me about the catapult. Well, we have pumpkins donated from local farm markets, and we load them on a catapult and launch them. And then we'll have activities and crafts inside as well. Wow. Now, you don't see catapults too often in the libraries. Who came no. up with that idea? Uh, Dana Phelps. Dana, who is uh, the branch manager here as yes. well as Hedgesville. Uh, so she came up with it. Where did the catapult come from? Who did someone build it? Did you guys acquire it somehow? Dana go and her go to a Vikings Day and grab a <laughs> Vikings Day. <laughs> Dana and her husband built it. Well, that's great. So what besides a catapult is very interesting. And uh, what other kind of programs do you have? Well, as I said, we have preschool story time once a week. Um, we do offer adult crafts once a month. We have an adult book group that meets once a month. Uh, and you mentioned the, the kids' program, so you get story times and we stuff as well, We do do story right? time, and we do do a, like a middle school book group. And during the summer, we have our summer reading program for all age mm -hmm. children. You know, a fairly small library. Uh, what's your biggest challenge on an everyday basis? Space. 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 If you had, you know, if you got a wish, wish list and... Uh, besides wanting more money, I mean, all libraries want more money. If you had a wish list, what would that? What would be number one on that wish list? A bigger building. So, is there any possibility of getting? We're talking about how big this county is growing. You're getting a hundred 
uh, new uh, library cards a month. Any possibility down the road that we could see something? Possibly. Money is an issue, but possibly. There's talk about it. And I suppose you're 100% behind that idea. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> so you want to give us a quick tour? Sure. So, Molly, first, let's talk about the Christmas tree. Well, this is one of our fundraisers. We have a very active friends group, and they um, sell Christmas ornaments that are donated to the library. And then we use those funds for programs and supplies that just this library might need. Okay. What else we have? So, over here, we're walking through the adult section. On um, one side is the nonfiction, and the other side is the mystery and the large print. And when we get to the end of this aisle, you'll see the inspirational fiction. And against okay. the back wall is the regular mm -hmm. adult fiction. Gotcha. Adult mysteries are down this middle aisle right here. This middle aisle is the young adult section and the juvenile chapter book section. Okay. And this last area is the children's section. Children's nonfiction, children's picture books, toys, movies, games. Well, in a, you know, in a growing, growing county like this one, it's pretty obvious that uh, you guys could use some extra room. Yes, it is. <laughs> Molly, thanks for being with uh, us. Thank you for coming. We're going to take one more look at one more library in Berkeley County right after this. Share your heart. Share your love. Make a shelter pet part of your world. We're here in Inwood, West Virginia at the Musselman South Berkeley Community Library. I'm here with branch manager David Porterfield. David, thanks for being with us. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, first, let's talk about this branch. It's fairly unique. Uh -huh. um, it's a combination of a school and public library. Uh -huh. So tell me how that works. Well, it, I personally feel it works very well. It, again, uh, our collections are combined. Mm -hmm. We, the school library has purchased some of our collection. The public library purchases other parts of our collection. Mm -hmm. uh, the material is accessible to both students and to public uh, patrons. And um, our branch is considerably larger than most other branch libraries in the system because we are a part of a high school facility and we were, have more space. I would imagine the traffic is probably a lot higher too because of the school being right here. Especially during the school year, mm -hmm. uh, during, the, during the school day, things are very, very busy. So I imagine the relationship between you and the school has to be very close. It does. In, in what ways do you have to work with the, with the school and how, how do you work with them? One of the main things I would say is we have to communicate. We have to, uh, in fact, the school librarian and I uh, try first thing in the morning or at the beginning of a week to kind of touch base and make sure we know what's going on. Uh, Amanda keeps me informed of all the school classes that are scheduled during a particular week. Uh, I make sure she is aware of story times, any special events that are happening from the public standpoint. So how does, how does the public access a school library? And during school times, security in today's world in schools is, it can, can be kind of tight. How does someone from the public? Well, I want to say, I, I'm going to say, use the word unfortunately, but it is reality that after 9-11, the decision, at least with all of the Berkeley County schools, is that, that there had to be uh, but everybody had to be buzzed in mm -hmm. to the to the system, so public patrons do indeed uh, have to to ring a buzzer uh, to to come in to the public uh, entrance during school hours. During, what, about, what about outside school hours? All the time. So even all during the, the summer when school's not in session. Yes. So that, I guess, does that does, do you think that that hurts I know, attendance? I, I know when it first happened. Now I got to say I was not out here mm -hmm. at that time. I know the former director in Martinsburg was very concerned about that. No public patron is going to, or they're going to have problems with the fact of having to be buzzed in. 
I, I've been out here t- since 2010, and maybe two patrons during all that time has expressed a concern about that. Well, David, why don't you show us around? Okay. So, David, uh, why don't you go ahead and describe everything for us? All right. Well, first of all, I do want to say that back here, we have a back workroom area. And on the other end of that is an archive room, Mm -hmm. which has um, Musselman memorabilia, as well as local history archives. This room here has our back issues of newspapers and magazines. Mm -hmm. It also is used three periods out of the day for ESL classes. Okay. Then I guess this is the... uh... This is the main circulation desk. Mm -hmm. Uh, We do have have the reader above us. It was a sculpture that was done by Albert Peroni in 1998 uh, when the school was built. And um, it does freak some people out because (laughs) it hangs over the circulation desk. But truly, it's made out of styrofoam. Yeah, it's very so, distinctive. Uh, and it's very beautiful mm-hmm. to see it at night um, uh, from look, looking, looking in from the library at night. Okay. We have some more rooms here to the left as well. We do. Th- we have a computer area here. All of these computers are public uh, computers. Students can use them as well, but the public library does provide these computers. Okay. Uh, again, our main circulation desk. We have Emily Jones, who is one of our... Uh, library, public library mm-hmm. employees. And here we have Amanda Long. She is the <laughs> library school media specialist who I work with on a daily basis. Okay. And over here to the right, we have... Uh, okay, we have our main collections. Books. Reference collection is here. Mm-hmm. Uh, our two main areas are fiction and nonfiction. The fiction area is along the wall. It wraps along the wall. Mm -hmm. And the nonfiction section is the low shelving, and it runs this way from 001 through 999. Okay, David, one of the things you mentioned was that you have both public library books and school library books here in the library. Yes. How do you tell the difference between the two? Okay, we basically tell the difference by the barcode. This one uh, begins with 3113. So we know that that is a public library Mm -hmm. purchase. This book begins with 3114. So we know it is a school purchase. And and either kids or the public can check out either one. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So our two main collections are here. We do have special collections. We have our new books back here. Mm -hmm. Uh, These are fairly new books as well. Mm -hmm. We have some series uh, that we have separated out here. Uh, modern classics that we call the old but gold, and then we have a large in, uh, mm-hmm. Christian fiction inspirational section okay. right here. And one last section over here is, uh, I believe, the children's library. Last but not least, the children's library is over in that room. Now that is that is primarily all public library materials that have been purchased uh, for for the students, and um, these bank of computers are also public library. Well, David, we appreciate the tour, and thanks for the time. Sure. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back after this. As you've seen, a lot of work and dedication goes into preparing a public library for the needs of the day. And it's the librarians and the staff who work behind the scenes every day who determine just how successful their library will be. I'd like to thank our guests, Gretchen Fry, Dana Phelps, David Porterfield, and Molly Brady. I'm your host, Stan Howe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Libraries Today.